come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. We hope you are. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, hey, wherever you found us, please give us a like, a star rating, or hit that subscribe button, because all that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And we like you. We like you. You have good taste. That's right. Because <laughs> you're listening to this show <laughs> about this movie. So these are the at least three quarters of the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. The uh, Let's see. Tonight's movie was chosen by. Holly. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a little movie called Jennifer's Body. From the year. 2009. And directed by. Karen Kusama. Kusama. Oh shit! The director of Eon Flux. That's right, Colin. <laughs> and the invitation. And the invitation. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The well, I know she did Girl Fight. Was the one that was yeah. the Michelle Rodriguez. I think that made both of them. Mm-hmm. Right? Was Michelle Rodriguez a commodity before Girl Fight? Yeah, I think. so. I don't know. I, I don't. So. I don't know a ton about Michelle I'm Rodriguez' like career, big, honestly. Yeah, I'm not a big huge fan of hers. Me neither. Um, I don't I, get it. Honestly, wait, wasn't she in the Fast and Furious movie? Yeah. Yeah. That, those had already She's come always out. been in no, them, yeah. Not by Girl Fight, had they? I think so, hadn't they? I'm trying to think. First Fast and Furious movie. It had to have been like 99, like 2000, right? Uh, it wasn't 99. Yeah, they're old. Those movies are okay. old. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look it up. I'll I don't double know what check. year Girl Fight came out. Let's see. Well, I, I remember that when she got critically acclaimed for you know uh, her performance. Karen Kusama, of course, for directing. And then she leveraged that into Eon Flux. Hadn't she already become super famous from Blue Crush? Oh, Anyone? God. Anyone? Michelle Rodriguez? Yeah. Girl Fight uh, was 2000. Fist and the Furious was 2001. Oh, Holy shit. Okay. Well, okay well, there you go. Um, so, uh, and Karen Kusama, yeah. She also did yeah. the, uh, re- she came kind of like after the Eon Flux Jennifer's Body 2 header. Yeah. I don't think she did anything she for did a little a lot while. She did a lot of TV. Okay. Yeah. A lot of TV. She did the a lot of TV. TV purgatory mm-hmm. before being but reacclaimed. Like, but she for did the do invitation. like multiple episodes on one series. Yeah, she so did, like she did like an ar- she did a couple arcs like on on some shows and they were prominent shows like they were, were fan favorites I should say. Yeah. Like so she what? did a good job. That's a great question. Hold okay. on, let me I check because I, like I looked like this up earlier and I forgot. Like I remember seeing. I was like, "Oh, okay, these yeah. aren't like like people enjoyed these shows." Yeah. I looked you this know? up earlier and I totally forgot. I know. What the shows I looked were, it up too. I'm gonna and double I didn't, check. I didn't put it in my notes. I just Has put she down done the anything since the, uh, the invitation. The invitation yeah. is a movie loved by many, not necessarily by myself. I have not seen it. I don't know. It's not my cup of tea. It's not terrible, but it's not my. I, I didn't. It was one of those. Where it didn't feel like the praise that was heaped on I it agree. was deserving. It was overhyped. Yeah. It's the yeah. TV she's directed: Masters of Sex, Halt and Catch Fire, Billions. So, like a lot of premium cable stuff okay. that is yeah. like a following. Yeah. Okay. Done the, man, the man in the high castle. She's oh, done yeah. a couple yeah. episodes. I was of say, that. Like things Chicago people, Fire. Yeah, things people like, not necessarily mm-hmm. stuff I've watched. Is yeah, that where she is like. now after the yep. invitation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought she, she could leverage the invitation uh, in the wave. The world or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's what she wants to be doing. I don't know. I don't yeah. really know much about her, but like, seems like it's like horror movie, TV, horror movie, TV. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Kind of back and forth like between those two. Be, she'd be at home in the horror world. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems like something well, that she enjoys. She's done two of them. So, I mean, that's yeah. going to, you know, give her some street cred among horror fans. Well, okay. So she made this movie. Uh, yeah. Which may or may not be a horror movie. I suppose that's something we're going to talk about. Subjective, Who I suppose. wrote this movie? That's the thing. The one that we know better is probably the writer of this movie is Diablo Cody. Mm-hmm. We know what her birth name is. Oh, does that matter? Brooke, 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 Brooke Busey. Yeah. Diablo Cody is an awesome fucking name. It is. It's, <laughs> it's great. great. It's, it's a great pen it's name. It's like, really wow, great. that's a cool fucking name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, knows, she knows how to market herself, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Who is Diablo Cody, and why do we care? We we care. Well, we started caring about Diablo Cody when a movie called Juno came out. Just a little movie. Okay. You might have heard movie. of it. You may have heard it. <laughs> it might have been know. nominated for a billion Oscars. It might have won. <laughs> One, yeah. <laughs> was it screenplay? Yeah, she, yeah. she okay. her screenplay, sole yeah. writer. She won the Oscar. Only yeah. her name is on it. Yeah. That is dope. And it was specifically because I mean, it all came out like what where she came from, like how she. She has a herself. good story. She has a really great. I've read her she book. Like a, she was a stripper or something. Or like did stripper that on a phone sex app. Yeah. 
And then well, she had a, she wrote a like, book, right? That was she wrote about, a book. Oh, no, I think she it's called had, Candy Girl. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. She had a blog no. before that that was like a fake. Uh, wasn't she like doing some kind of? Yeah, know, she was. It was like yeah. it was like these weird kind of like sex at like sex adventure stories, right? And she wrote under a pen name, and they were like supposed to be like half fictional, yeah. half truth sort of mm. thing, and that caught a lot of attention. She went to school for like journalism and media studies, so she's always been like a writer, but it's always been like her day day job was like some sort of sex work position, and then yeah. wrote on the side. No, was she thing. was she an exotic dancer or full on stripper? Uh, everything I read said stripper. Okay. Um, there was like apparently because she's from Chicago, moved to Minnesota. Yeah. That's why every movie she ever writes is based in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, but there was something talking about how like they had like an amateur night at a strip club where they like literally anyone could just walk in and be like, "I'm going to strip tonight," and she did that, and then was like, "I'm going to keep doing this," and yeah. then became a job, worked at uh, a sex toy store, was a mm-hmm. phone sex operator. Like that, I don't know. She's got a good story, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. I remember seeing her win the Oscar and being like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, yeah. I like th- a normal person can win a fucking Oscar. Yeah, like, like I think that just. I mean, I, I I I can't speak for the male population, but for the female population, I think when she won that, that was like a big moment. For me, like, it was like a for me like, personally, it was like a watershed like, moment. I was yeah. like, wait, a normal person with like tattoos that's kind of weird yeah. and has a weird background can win yes. an Oscar. Like that's cool. exactly like well, someone. See, I figure yeah. that is the kind of people who win. No, Oscars, if you would watch the Oscars that year, she stood out like a sore <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. thumb. She had like yeah. this cheetah print like vintage dress on. All, her tattoos, all of her tattoos on showing. Yeah, like it was like, and she and at the point, I mean, she's always had funky hair. She had like red hair like it was just Mm. she yeah yeah she looked I mean I don't want to say she looked um like she was like trashy fabulous you know like she was owning who she was at the uh, Oscars it was kind of amazing Matt Stone was that the same year they showed up in dresses and Oh, oh, I don't. Know. I don't but. think that was the same year. But. <laughs> but you could tell, like to me, it looked like she dressed herself and didn't have like a designer dresser. You exactly, know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it looked like she was very much like, I'm going to the Oscars, yeah. going to dress myself and do my own hair. You know, exactly. She represents the future. Yeah. Of uh, Hollywood. I was into it. That was uh, that was. A, I was 17 years old when Juno came out, so I was the same age as the titular Juno. So yeah, that was a very uh, impactful mo- movie for me. Well, if I remember correctly, too, yeah. Juno, uh, myself being a horror fan, but my ears went up in the dialogue of Juno, where I think uh, Jeremy Sisto in that. No, was in it? she makes a reference to like some what was it Evil Dead? She's talking. Did Jason Bateman or yeah? She was talking her and Jason about- Bateman have a whole back and forth about Herschel Gordon Lewis for a very yeah. long scene. Yeah, okay, they talk about Wizard of Gore like they watch Wizard of Gore. Yeah, they watch Wizard of Gore. Uh, fun fact: mm-hmm. Wizard of Gore was shot at the TV station where I work. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> I think you told me that like the day I started. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, you go funny. going like, yeah. See, look at that. That's you were like, the- I'm Colin. Fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is Colin's fun fact, right? <laughs> she also, so her horror cred also extends to the uh, Evil Dead remake, the mm-hmm. Fede Alvarez Evil Dead remake. Mm-hmm. You may or may not know this, but Juno, or not Juno, Diablo Cody was a uh, uncredited script doctor on that movie. That's what she does a lot of now, is like uh, uncredited like editing and doctoring of scripts, mm-hmm. it seems like so. What has she done since... Um, she did like a movie called Paradise or something, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Which I never that was her heard directorial of. debut. Yeah. Debut. I never watched it. I didn't know much about it. Um, she obviously. Uh, this is like. I love the start of her career, and then I don't, then I don't get, really like we, where it goes and then after we get that. Young adult and then we get young Tully. adult and Tully, which is the same. Fu- okay, if we you, did get United States of Terra, right? Which is a. F- I yeah. know I brought it up on the show before. It's a fabulous TV show. It's Everyone should go fucking show. watch it. It's yeah. great. Um, Tony Collette's amazing. It was a Steven Spielberg idea, right? It was his mm-hmm. idea for that. It was an mm-hmm. Amblin or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. That's the multi- multiple personality. Yep, Tony yeah, Collette Tony is a Collette. mom with multiple personalities, and Which it's Tony great. Tony Collette is amazing in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at some point she said, hey, I want to try my hand at the horror genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I get it feels like she's a legitimate horror fan. Like she knows, For sure. you know, I think so. Yeah. The genre. And so at the height of her powers, she sold this script, Jennifer's Body. Uh, she, in her blank check phase of her career, right? Yeah. Like she yeah. just won the Oscar. She can do whatever mm-hmm. the fuck she wants. Basically, yeah. This is what she does. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's like a hero yeah. story right there. Yeah. It's she, like you yeah. win the Oscar. I want to make a horror movie. And, and like, a, like a teen horror movie. Yeah, yeah. teen horror movie. Yeah. And Jason Reitman was all about it. I wish he would have directed this. this. I know. Like, no offense to Karen Kusama. I think she's a competent director. But I think Jason Reitman has a better handle on what Diablo Cody is trying to do with her writing than any other director. Those two as a team make... Like, I didn't like Young Adult. I didn't like Tully. But he understands her voice in a way other people don't. Yeah, he really does. 
Well, the other big, the fulcrum around which this movie revolves is its cast, or namely its star. Mm. Who do we have as Jennifer and her body? Miss Megan Fox. Who the fuck is that? Holly? Brian Austin her. Green's wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are they ma- still married? I think yes. so. Yes, they are. Well, she exploded onto the scene. Everybody remembers Transformers, that mm-hmm. scene of her like hanging over the car hood yeah um white snake video mm-hmm. yeah was yeah. she in a white yeah. snake video no it no, was like, like a, a, oh, it was, was like say. a white snake video yeah wow. um, before I, that she was on a little sitcom called hope and faith i know i remember but, first seeing her in the Lindsay lohan movie confessions of a teenage drama oh, oh yeah really? that's right i forgot about that <laughs> the kid that i used to babysit wanted he was like obsessed with her i thought it was a crush turns out he was just really gay and <laughs> thought she was fabulous but i remember taking him to see that movie and i was like who's this cute girl she doesn't look like that when her anymore. face looked completely yeah. different. Yeah, when she looked like a totally different girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I I think Megan Fox doesn't look like Megan Fox much anymore. No, she's that's had a lot. Of, that's what we're talking about. She's had a lot of. Yeah. Work. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Lindsay no, Lohan. No, well, God no. Well, her too. <laughs> Same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, for different reasons. Yeah, but that yes. train wreck. No. Yeah. No, no, Megan, Megan Fox, Fox looks very different. She's had a ton of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she didn't look her April O'Neil in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. I only saw the first one. Uh, yeah. I think you're the only one who's seen any of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen a single one of them. No, I have not. I guarantee Sean hasn't seen any either. I was kind of um, screaming. Speak it. for Sean because I'm like, no, at some I would point, say Sean has seen them. You think his ki- he take, took his kid to see him? I think he probably went alone. <laughs> wow, that's that's way worse than what I assumed. <laughs> Knowing Sean, yeah, I bet he went by well, himself. Well, I saw the movie by myself. I was screening it, I guess, with the idea that you know nieces and nephews would like, can they watch it? Because they're big fans of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But uh, I don't think they're ready for that movie yet. Um, um, Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Yeah. yeah so she hit the. Uh, I mean, with it felt like it was Transformers and then she became like the sex symbol mm-hmm. of uh, 2008, 2009, 2007 through, you know, 2009 or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Remember Jonah Hex? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, I do. Yeah. Uh, you know how many times I've thought about bringing that to the freak show? <laughs> because I love the comics of Jonah Hex and I do not like that the movie. The comics are nothing, anyone, nothing, nothing, nothing like, like the, the movie. Not like no. The movie. But yeah. like on paper, like Josh Brolin as Jonah Hex sounds oh, like such so a good excited. idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When they said they were doing it, yeah. I'm like, Jonah Hex this is going to be awesome. awesome. And then yeah. you see the first the trailer. The trailer the was, poster oh doesn't God, look yeah. like anything like what you want. No. Yeah. 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 Guys, never forget. Uh, Josh Brolin already had a failed uh, franchise of comic book movies. How How is the public consciousness completely forgotten about Jonah Hex? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we should be making jokes about that like we do about Green Lantern. Right. It's his Green Lantern. Right. Yeah. So, like, why why have we completely which, forgotten about Jonah which Hex? Which is, is it? Is it poetic that he was in the last Deadpool movie? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> a little bit. Maybe, but they need to bring it up in the next Deadpool movie. Yeah, For real. I'm Jonah surprised Hex. they didn't, I'm surprised they yeah. didn't make that joke. You look like that Jonah one. Hex motherfucker. You know? <laughs> so, like, that's all you gotta do, you know? That's true. Get, get half of his face burned and then make that joke, I'm really you know? surprised they didn't make that joke. Well, yeah. I'm hoping they make a TV show, Jonah Hex, at some point. You know, more like an actual Ooh, like Western. like an HBO. Like, yeah. ooh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I feel like it would have a Westworld vibe. Yeah. Mm. Take your scrap footage mm-hmm. from Westworld. It needs to be like really mangy movie. I yeah. That's like a dirty. Hex. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty no, that's how movie. I, that's how it should be. I'm yeah. just saying, I feel like that's what would happen. Well, here we have, uh, Megan Fox that's paired right. up with her co-star. Oh, I'm sorry. Amanda Seyfried. Amanda Seyfried. Oh, little red riding hood. No, she was just red riding hood. I'm sorry. Right. That's red what we all know her from. And oh, the one girl in time when we watched it in time. <laughs> right. I mean, she's, <laughs> Let's, now let's, she's uh, like what? let's give her a little more credit. She's she was in those ABBA movies, it, the, the Mamma Mia? Mia and Dear John, the Nicholas Dear, Sparks oh movie. How about Mean Girls? Mean Girls. How yeah. about Les Mis? How about? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was yeah. what she was. So she, what was the movie that made her like a uh, a big deal? That mean, she started. Mean getting, Girls is what put her on the scene. Yeah, but there must have been something closer to Les Mis that she did that was like Amanda well, Seyfried did, well, is in she, everything Well, now. she did Mamma Mia and they're like, oh shit, she can sing. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because right. she's a very good singer. Yeah. Her, okay. She's well. very subtly named Needy is the name of her character. <laughs> That's I, not very I, I subtle. I fucking hate that thing about this movie. Yeah? I hate, it drives me fucking insane. Like, no, no real person's name is Needy. Like, and I understand that. Is that her name or her nickname in this? That's what they, all they ever call her. They Needy. never call her anything other than that. And like she even says her first and last name together, like what is it, Lady Needy Lesnecki or something yeah. like that. She says her full name, mm. so yeah. Like I know Diablo Cody doesn't trade in realism; that's not her currency of yeah. writing. But like 
really Really? Yeah. This is a bridge too far for yeah. me. Like she, she, <laughs> when she was developing these characters, she literally was like, "Okay, here I've got the cheerleader, and I've got the needy friend." So she was like, "Needy, check," and she was like, "That's I'm just I leaving it at that." Yeah, I hate, I hate that. <laughs> and even worse, she said, "Jennifer, check." And so the actual yeah. character's name it is Jennifer, Jennifer check. check. Oh fuck! Like that. it's uh, ba- yeah, Jennifer check. That I, is, thought, I heard that it was based on a song by. Um, I'm sure they made it up after the fact. Oh, I thought it no, was... no. The, the, her inspiration was the song Jennifer's Body by Hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, there was yeah. still Jennifer check. Still That's there. lazy. Yeah. That is like is it lazy, lazy or is that like this kind of? It's lazy and it's apathetic. It's like it doesn't fucking yeah, matter, so yeah. who cares? But does that carry into the movie itself? You know, actually, before we get into that, you know what the di- the dialogue in this, and you guys were saying as we were watching this movie, that uh, Diablo Cody is one of those writers who just kind of makes up. She uh, makes up her own slang. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is cool. I kind of like that when, I do too. Uh, when because, writers do that, because, if they're uh, yeah. good. Not I like, feel like if that's so razor. Yeah. Like, what was that disturbing behavior? I fucking hated well, that, that guy, That's but. the thing is, like, there's something kind of kind of great about it because it creates this it helps create this fictional world like there is a world where yeah, these, sl- these slang real, worlds right? these slang words are real you know that right. they actually are used and it's it's helping to create this this environment which works because her movies are so removed from what reality is actually like mm-hmm. right so it makes sense in her worlds mm-hmm. yeah. i don't think anyone else could do it necessarily but yeah, it there works was a guy, for her see the, the 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 dialogue to me sounded like there was a guy named daniel waters who wrote a movie called heathers oh, yes heathers yeah. had that same i'm sure like, she loves that movie no, yeah. I, ha- I actually have that in my notes that like movies she's very I, inspired by that yeah, movies yeah that i thought it was compare uh comparable to was uh Heather's Twilight and Ginger Snaps. Yeah, Ginger I can Snaps. See that. Yeah, Ginger yeah. Snaps. Okay, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can, Those are my I find her sense. her writing style to be like this weird, cracked out bastard child of Kevin Williamson and Amy Sherman Palladino. Because like mm-hmm. this movie, I actually think for a Diablo Cody movie, this movie's light on the references. Yes, it's light yes. on the pop culture references. Juno, Juno is like, like hitting you over fire. the head rapid with fire. the pop culture references. Yeah. It is nonstop in Juno. Yep. Um, young adult, it's. It's there because she's like a YA writer, so it's it's there, but yeah. it's mostly coming from the other characters. Tully, uh, I retain nothing from that movie, so I don't have anything to say. I, I kind of hate watching that movie because I was like, I've already seen. I was like, I've seen Charlize Theron play like a like a Arrested Development adult. I've seen Ellen Page play a pregnant teenager, and in this movie, it's Charlize Theron playing an arrested adult that's pregnant. And I'm like, yeah. fuck you for only writing one movie. Yeah. Like I was no, mad. I was I, mad. I remember you saying that before, and I thought about that with this movie because our two main characters are um, like a kind of weird nerdy girl and her cheerleader best friend. If you've seen Juno, you know that is Juno. About a weird girl and her cheerleader best friend. Olivia like, Thoroughby, yeah. yeah Write what thing. you know and, you know, people stick with, I mean, that's how they're able to get it. Like the, you know, the, their but certain when you, themes. When you put out one movie every seven years and it's the same fucking movie, ugh. Like, yeah. like there was like seven years between Young Adult and Tully and we got the same movie in that time. It's like, right. it's, I mean, I love you know. John Carpenter movies and every single one of those is about like a, you know, somebody who doesn't want to become one of them. But John Carpenter didn't like win an Oscar with his first movie. That's you know what I'm true. saying? Like, so like your expectations are really high when that's where you start, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. We want a whole bunch of movies that are different. Like, why not? Why doesn't she return to the horror instead of being like, hey, it's another pregnant person that can't handle Maybe life? Maybe she doesn't have another horror thing in her. Yeah. I don't know if she had a horror thing in her to begin with. This is the thing. Like, I thought this movie was more of a horror movie the last time I saw it. Than I did watching it this time. I can time. see that. I, I kind of agree with that. Like my memory of this movie, because I hadn't seen it in a long time. My yeah, memory me of this movie, I was like horror movie. Watching it now, I was like teen movie, right, <laughs> yeah, teen, yeah, com- teen, teen comedy, comedy with yeah. some yeah. horror elements. Yeah. Well, because yeah. It's, it's helped by the fact that it's photo. I don't know who the director of photography on it was. I'm sorry, sir or ma'am. The uh, it has because I was sitting there looking at it at one point and actually going like, this is a teen comedy. But why doesn't it feel like a teen comedy? It's like because it's not shot like it. No, you know, because the, the lighting yes. and the, the film stock. Because the cinematographer is shooting a horror movie. He's shooting a yes, horror movie. Agree. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree. I don't agree. like the way this movie's shot. I like parts of it. There I, are elements of it that I enjoy, but then there's other parts that don't work. There's some like camera tricks. That I'm like, why? Why are we doing this right yeah. now? You know, like sometimes they'll like slow it down at times that they don't need to. And I, I don't think the editing in this movie is helps it either. Well, that's um, very yeah. 2009. It yeah, like I said, like, maybe it's just it was, a product of the time, and I'm noticing that. It was a kind of weird thing that they did, and they did it a couple times where it was like almost a split screen. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Where yeah. it was like a man. That's the split diopter shot. Yes. That and Brian it, De Palma used to use all the time. That's it. That's yeah. exactly it. And it, it it's it was, your character in the foreground and like the right side is in focus. And the person in the background yeah. on the left side is also in focus. It was odd. Like yeah. it didn't make sense in this. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I didn't really it it didn't seem like there was a reason for a lot of the things that were no. happening other than let's just try this. We can do it. Yeah. You know? And it and it was also very odd to me because like Amanda Seyfried's character would it was it was usually with her that they do that shot and it was like she was um, listening to people's conversations. So they I was like, like, oh, is she psychic? Did I forget that about this yes, movie? Yes. I had a I moment. was like, she's across the room or she's across a b- loud bar. Like, yeah. she's, there's no way she can hear them right now. I was like, does she have superpowers? I was very confused by that. I thought I totally misremembered this movie when that happened. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, is it like they both have something? Yes. <laughs> That's and why then, I was like, it doesn't work because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah and then no, agree. she doesn't. Totally agree. Yeah, I never read it that way. Yeah. I mean, I get that you're saying like, you know, if there's music playing in a bar, she shouldn't be able yeah, to overhear exactly. this conversation. Because if this were an X-Men movie, that's how they would show a mutant has that power to hear across the room. Uh, right? Yeah. That's exactly what I thought of. You know? I, like, could see the scene. Of, yeah. There's a, there's actually an X-Men movie I think does that. Because yeah. I was picturing one in my head. Mm-hmm. And see, there's Brian De Palma movies where people are doing that, too, where somebody up front is hearing something. The, but, um, so the plot of this movie, basically, you've got these two teen girls, uh, Needy and uh, Jennifer, uh, and they're in high school. And there's a, a there's I mean, what's the dynamic between them uh, prior to the incident involving the band? There there's a um, the dynamic dynamic between them is kind of a cliche. Like there's there's the cheerleaders who's Jennifer and she's kind of the like the head bitch in charge. You know what I mean? She's she's the dominant friend. And then there's the quiet, nerdy, like pushover friend. Even though neither of them seem to have a big circle of friends, it doesn't seem like they are friends with any. It's just no, the two of them the in this world. That it's, I mean, they make it seem that it's a very small town and yeah. they don't see them interacting with many other people. And no. they've been friends since childhood. So yeah. that's why they're still friends, even though it seems like they have nothing in common. Right. I really and don't buy their friendship in this movie. Her boyfriend even like, says that at one yeah. point. He's like, you guys have nothing in common. Yeah. Who's the yeah. boyfriend? Chip? Who yep, plays Chip that Doug, guy? Johnny uh, Johnny Simmons. Do we know him from anything? This okay. probably. Right. I I didn't, know, I I didn't, didn't recognize think he him, was but... good. Thought he was very one note. I thought he. I mean, that was just kind of the character too. Yeah, I think he was character. meant to be like a like someone for Amanda Seyfried to talk to, and that was it. You know, and I was like, like I don't think they gave him much to work with anyway, so I don't right. think it was really the the actor necessarily. Well, I think, he provides the like uh, I don't know the. Not the moral center. He's like the sane center, right? Mm-hmm. Of the movie where all the supernatural stuff is like swirling around. He's the guy who's like, okay, I'm representing, you know, the person who's not exposed to all this stuff. And yeah. here's, you know. He's the straight man. He's, <coughs> yeah. yeah. <coughs> but he's also the, um, I don't know. I mean, he's, you know, because Needy is in love with him, then you're putting him in a position where if you put him in uh, jeopardy later on, than the audience yeah. feels for needy. You know? Yeah, and they I mean, they kind of hit on it before they go out to the, the club that night. Um, but they don't really hit on it much later. I, the whole point of his character is that um Jennifer is jealous. Yeah. That he has her attention. Because there's yes. a it should be just the two of them, but yes. there's this third wheel yeah. basically that needy has a boyfriend. Yeah, they don't they don't spell that out a lot in this. You're just kind of supposed to like catch that in the beginning and just run with it. But it is suggested that she's jealous of him. Yeah. Cause Jennifer just uses guys. Yeah. You know, it's, it, the movie it implies that she's sexually active, Yes, but needy's just sexually active with one guy. Yeah. And it's more than just because sex she loves with her. Him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Jennifer sees that as a threat. And I mean, mm. that basically, if you strip all the supernatural shit away from the movie, is kind of what the movie's about. It's, you know. It is. Uh, it absolutely <laughs> is. It absolutely is. Which, I mean, I appreciate the theme because that's a very real issue in young women growing up, you know. Even adult women sometimes, Even adult unfortunately. <laughs> absolutely. It's absolutely true. You know, yeah. the women can be very, I mean, men could be too. I'm, I'm not sure I can't speak mm. to that. But women can be very protective of their friendships Mm -hmm. and they don't want to lose that attention. It's very important to them. And, you know, specifically teenage girls handle it very poorly. A lot of times. I think too, in this situation, because Jennifer was 
always obviously the prettier one. She's used yeah. to having all the attention, so any attention taken yeah. off of her is like not not okay. Yeah, and it, she, uh, and of course we have the the classic trope where the less the the not pretty one is uh-huh. still like it's Amanda Seyfried. She's beautiful. They just she's didn't just brush got, her hair and she, put glasses yeah, on. She her. has glasses and frizzy hair. Yeah, like, that's mm-hmm. it. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, there was a scene early on that I thought like underscored there the the the. The shot or whatever, the scene that that underscored to me what their relationship was all about was um, it was in stairwell. And I think they, they're they like fake pushing each other. Yeah. And I love the way that the filmmakers like accentuate, you know, they're pushing back and forth. And then Jennifer gives like a hard push. Yeah. And she like slams you, against the door. <laughs> the slam is like into yeah. the door. And it's like, OK, so Jennifer is basically telling Needy at this point, like, you know. Who's the boss yeah. in this, you know, I'm the more important one. They go to see a band. A band is called Low Shoulder. I love this kind of shit in movies. I've always like, uh, uh, you know, because I've tried to write stuff myself. And you're always like, what's a great fucking band name, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so whenever they do a fake band name that sounds like it could be a real band name, I think Low Shoulder sounds like a yeah, real band. Yeah, it does. Band. It does <laughs> sound <laughs> like, legit. Like, oh, how come we haven't ever had a Low yeah. Shoulder? And Drive wish- Shaft was the other one from Lost. I was like, mm-hmm. God damn those fuckers. I didn't, ri- I didn't write it down. I wish I could remember. The, it, the band had a totally different name. And then last minute they changed it to Low Shoulder. And I don't remember what it was. This was in that time, though. We were talking about it a little bit off mic, but like from the mid to late 90s to like the mid to late aughts, mm-hmm. there was this period of time on television where uh, you would have a band come play, like a real band yes. come play on a TV, sh- a teen TV show, mm-hmm. and they would show up close for a long time, them playing a whole song. Yep. And at the end of the episode, they would say, go to your local Best Buy or whatever and get the soundtrack for tonight's yeah. episode. The OC did it for every fucking episode. Mm-hmm. One did. Tree Hill did it for every yep. fucking episode. And, and before that, yeah. the first one to really do it, 90210 did it mm-hmm. every week. Whoever was... Buffy did Buffy it. Did it. Buffy did it, yeah. Days, yeah. Yep. Like, who, whoever was big at the time, right. you know, I remember yeah. they had fucking like Goo Goo Dolls and Christina Aguilera, whoever yeah. was big at the time. They I played remember, the Peach Pit at I remember When you first saw in the first run of those shows, there would be the little pop up fucking annoying uh, graphic like at the bottom of the screen that mm-hmm. would tell you, or that it was, or maybe it was during the credits. Oh, OC point, and One Tree Hill always at the end at had the like end. a graphic that would come up at the end of the episode that was like, yeah. these were tonight's bands. And it would say, like, go buy the OC soundtrack. And then yeah. it would say, and here's their individual albums. Maybe like, it was when I was watching the Scream show on fucking MTV. It was oh, popping yeah. up like every say, song. It's, like, it's, it was it's like, been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they only yeah. do that in recent years. Okay. Yeah. They didn't do that back in the 90s. No, it was thoughts. always like, a, yeah. a put, but like, once like iPods became a thing, like, that stopped. Like, I feel yeah. like that, like 2008, 2009, 10, like, that's when that stopped real hard because. Mm-hmm. But I remember the early to mid aughts. It was like oh, every fucking episode of One Tree Hill and the OC did something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Well, this movie is basically a satanic rock movie. No, that's not true. But there are satanic. <laughs> it trades in those tropes, you which know. Which is playing right into one of my uh, favorite movie horror movie subgenres, mm-hmm. where you have the uh, demonic rock band uh, trying to sacrifice the uh, virgin. To gain, it's the Faustian bargain, right? right that yeah. They're going to become famous. Right. Except in this movie, they fuck it up. Well, they're they're. I mean, I guess it's because it's June or not. God damn it! I'm just going to keep calling her Juno. Diablo okay. Cody's yes. uh, sensibility is that she can't take this stuff seriously. You know, obviously, this is a a fun horror movie. Yeah. Right. I mean, or that's how all of her movies are. Comedy. She doesn't write serious movies. Yeah. So there, it's Adam Brody, who mm-hmm. you would all know from. DLC. Shows such as DLC, Gilmore Girls, right in the land of women. I was going to say you're saying he's like when he was super famous. I'm yeah. like, was he super? Yes, famous? he was for a while there. No, he was, he had a lot of small parts in from that. like 2003 oh, to in, 2007, um, probably. Uh, I do remember hell. he was in Thank You for Smoking. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but he was in something. He yeah. He, I mean, I've seen him in subsequent yeah. things where it's like, oh, I know who Adam Brody is. Yeah, but it was like Misha Barton and the guy who's Commissioner Gord. Yeah, Ben. Uh, oh God, Ben. What is? We're the OC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. A big, big deal. Ben something. Um, so, but I like it when movies get like you know when I watch this because you know I was like, yeah, what would a a, a a rock band that was into the occult look like? And in this movie, I was like, oh shit, that is what they would look like in yeah, in two thousand nine. Oh yeah. yeah, they would look like some forty one. <laughs> this movie is a perfect timestamp of two thousand nine. Oh, so 
everything kids. about it. I was like, everything. I was being taken back. I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. That was 10 years ago already. That's sad. The, the, like one of the first parts of the movie is a uh, camera panning over the, um, or rolling over the, the floor. And she's got all the letters and she's like, I get more letters than Santa, Zach Efron and Dr. Phil. I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> which, which actually all those age very well. Like Zach Efron's still a big fucking deal. You know, like I mean, he's he's still big and he's still working, but he's not he's like a not, teen in fact. He was a teen. He's not the heart No, but like, but at yeah. least we know it was still hear his name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's not like no, it's he like the, the thing that's gonna the that's gonna eventually date it is probably those references in another ten years. You know, and people are like, who the fuck are these people? Mm-hmm. And the editing, the, I think, was one of those music. things. That, yeah, well, the, the music, music is already yeah. dated. It, I think, you know. Um you know, you know what year it was, and I suppose the cast. Yeah, but like that's the, the hairstyle, the, the, the fashion, the fashion is so two thousand nine. Like, Everything uh, about it, the, the entire character of Cullen. Yeah, that's two thousand nine. If, if two thousand nine was a person, yeah, it'd be that guy, <laughs> the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I looked like in two thousand nine. Kyle, Kyle something. Kyle. Colin. No, the no, actor. no Kyle Gallner. Oh, Kyle Gallner. Yeah, yeah, he seemed familiar. From, he looked familiar, didn't he? Yeah. Um, I know. See, I should know this. I know. As, as we get more modern, I get kind of like, ah, I've seen him and stuff. I know. I was, I was trying to figure out while we were watching this. I didn't look it up. He was in. I'm looking wait, up. was he in the fucking haunting in Connecticut or whatever the hell? He there? might have been <laughs> a haunting in Connecticut. Believe it or not, this guy was an American sniper. That's not what I know. I don't recall <laughs> him. In, I did it. see it, but I can't remember his part in that. That's not but it. I'm going to place bets on a haunting in Connecticut. Kyle <laughs> Gallner. Gal- what? What, year, what year was a haunting in Connecticut? Uh, 2005? Um, oh, seven, three, you are five. correct. He wasn't a haunting. Bam. Connecticut. All right. There it was we 2009. Go. It was the same year as this movie. Okay. I still don't think that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> He's been in a ton of shit, it feels like. Or he was Maybe. in that period of time. Um, but anyway, so Jennifer is, uh, if, you know, she's infatuated with this band. The band is trying to find a virgin. She passes herself off as a virgin because. Uh, she is trying to avoid it. Well, in the, in the, in the bar needy says she's a virgin. So they'll have, they won't have interest in her. She overhears them talking about, we're looking for this virgin. She assumes they're going to like date rape her or something. Yeah. And so needy's trying to protect her and says mm-hmm. like, you know, she is a virgin, you know, like she doesn't even know what the hell she's doing. And yeah. Jennifer uh, says that later when they pack her into a van after the bar burns down. This is after the great white Rhode Island show in 2003 in real life. Where, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> where, yeah, where a band bit. actually did burn a bar down and kill a bunch of people. But this becomes the central thing of the uh, central, the like a uh, plot dressing in the movie. The band played because they're satanic burned a, a, a bar down, killed a whole bunch of people in this town. The town becomes nationally famous. The band is uh, trying to sacrifice a virgin so that they can become super famous. And so they sacrifice Jennifer in the town of Devil's Kettle about, around this like swirling whirlpool, which is a cool visual. It is it's cool. Like, it's very cool. In the woods, you know, it's yeah. like, it's kind of neat. I mean, if you're going to sacrifice someone in a town called Devil's Kettle, Devil's seems Kettle. like the place yeah. to do it, you know? Uh, but it turns out because she's not a virgin, something strange happens, even though it does seem like the band does become famous. Yeah, they still get their end of the bargain, which doesn't make any sense. I know. Why does the victim get the shaft? Do you think well, it was the just end a cool of the movie? I think is, uh, the, yeah. you know, I, know. Well, I was going to say, do you think it was just a coincidence that like they didn't actually get famous because of the sacrifice? They just got famous because of the tragedy there. Mm. Mm, that's all satanic shit. That's how it works, right? But like, I like the way that they found the incar- incarnation on the internet somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if they like, you know, what I'm saying though, like, I think that their sacrifice was inconsequential to them getting famous. I think that it's just because they happened to play at a town that had a huge tragedy and they kind of took advantage of that but then they meet their fate because of what they did so that's that kind of poetic justice thing yeah i know i'm just saying we were talking about it didn't make sense that they still got famous even though their sacrifice didn't work Mm. i'm saying i don't think the sacrifice made a difference either way well it ends up what it does do is it ends up trapping a demon in the body of jennifer see the titles double entendre so yeah it, uh jennifer's body becomes host of a demon thing although it doesn't seem like she's possessed it seems more like it's like an affliction like a vampirism yeah, or something she's you know? still jennifer yeah yeah until she gets Mostly. hungry and what happens 
uh, her hair gets all greasy, her skin breaks out, she gets hangry, basically. It's quote unquote ugly Megan Fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I still haven't really decided if I'm okay with that or not, because there's an obvious undertone of um, a menstrual cycle in that analogy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I'm not I sure mean, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I can see that. Um, I'm trying to decide if it's okay or not because it was exactly. written by a woman. You exactly. Know? Like, that's I don't why know I'm like, if um... that makes it a problem or not. <laughs> but I don't know because... I, I think I would have more of a problem with it if everyone was like, oh, you're such a bitch this time of the month. If they like really hit that hard. Well, she did yeah. hit the yeah. like, are you PMSing or something? And Right. Well, I mean, it's in the dialogue. But I think I feel like I feel like I've seen other movies that hit that same. I know. Harder. That's why I'm like Ginger saying. Snaps. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ginger Snaps. Yeah. yeah Ginger does. Snaps. For those of you who don't know, if you're not in the horror genre or horror world, well, you ever listen to this, you do. You yeah. Are. But yeah, you should go check that movie out. It's a, a werewolf film about two uh, teen girls and mm-hmm. deals with Catherine uh, Isabel's in it. Yeah. A teenage angst movie. Mm-hmm. But yes. a really good one. Mm-hmm. But it has a, one. That's a horror movie that has a little bit of comedy. This mm-hmm. is a comedy that has a little bit of horror. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Jennifer decides that what uh, she really needs is to go and uh, consume boys. Oh, did we say Chris Pratt is in this? <laughs> for a Pratt second. This. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for a second. Just doing his normal yeah. thing. Yeah. But it was He's like, not- oh, shit, Chris Pratt is in yeah. this movie. Yeah. yeah. I forgot in that he was in. Between Parks and Rec. Yeah, he's a, a the, like a deputy cop or something that Jennifer's yeah. banging. Um, she lords that over needy later, but he never shows back up in the movie. I thought maybe he uh-uh. died in the you know in the fire, but mm-hmm. um, uh, so Jennifer's going around and basically consuming the male classmates mm-hmm. that she has that survived. Specifically, she anyone who gives any positive attention to needy, it seems. Exactly. Anyone yeah. who like like even is just like the, the smallest bit polite to her, she's like, "That's my target." Is that just yep. that one guy, the Cullen guy, the goth kid? Yeah, because, because the first we one, didn't see the football players' interaction with anyone, yeah. right? No, football player and the foreign exchange student. She just mm-hmm. kind of goes after. Mm-hmm. Um, she but turned- didn't, didn't I, th- I feel like she made a comment about? Didn't she make? They were about talking both of them? about both of them in the first act of the movie. I felt like she alluded that they were nice guys or they were nice to her or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They didn't show anything, but I feel like she said something along those lines at one point. I can't remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I mean, she's working her way through the student body. Mm -hmm. J.K. Simmons, uh, who you may remember from Juno. Mm -hmm. That's right. uh, He was the dad. Yes. Shows up as a, uh, like, chemistry English teacher. What is he? I think he's a biology teacher. It looks like they're in a lab every With time you see yeah. him. Look for a hand. Yep. And an insane wig. I have to assume both of those <laughs> were a choice that he made because he's like, what the hell? I Horror could see Diablo C- C- Cody writing that shit into a script too, though. You mm. know? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it, I, it could be either or. It could go either way on that one. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's weird. Yep. Yeah. Um, there was some weird shit in Juno. Well, this That's becomes true. so. There's a dynamic here where uh, Jennifer is basically uh, uh, she's developing superpowers for less less of a better way of mm-hmm. phrasing this, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, okay. So I've heard that this movie is a feminist, like um, female empowerment. Uh, power, not empowerment is the wrong word. Like a power fantasy. Yeah. Right. Is that true? I, I can yes, see that read of it. It definitely yes. has elements of it because you have this this girl that is taking control. You know, she, men are powerless to her. Basically, she's at the same time. I think that that's kind of weak because you could argue that she always kind of had that power, just being like a pretty cheerleader in school. Very if true. it had been Needy's character that went through this story, that would be much more obvious that that's the yes. story it was trying to tell. Well, see, yeah. this is where maybe I'm getting confused with Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps kind of uses a uh, girl's, you know, sexual awakening as like that's when she has this power over guys. I guess Jennifer is kind of, it seems like she was already aware of this. Right. Yeah. You know? But I think maybe she has some resentment of that, that her power is because she's beautiful. And I don't think she, like, I, I feel like that's really symbolic towards the end of the movie when she's getting ready for the dance and she's like putting her makeup on, and she's like smearing it on her face. I think the fact that her 
her only power has been the fact that she's beautiful is what brings out this evil like because I, I don't think it's a coincidence that this like succubus demon attached itself to her like it did it because she's beautiful and I think she hates herself for that hmm all right that's interesting yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no well, I was just mulling that over yeah, yeah I'm trying to figure out if there's I mean that is an interesting wrinkle I just yeah. don't know if I am I putting too much that. in that I don't know well I don't know if I saw that in Jennifer because she seems to be loving it the whole time Except maybe for that one scene mm-hmm. in front of the mirror where she yeah. just seems to be, you know, it's like she thinks that she's ugly and she needs to put the makeup mm-hmm. on so she can go out and like get her fix, you know, so mm-hmm. she can be made whole again. Is that what you're, I mean. Because I, the more the movie goes on, the more you're getting, you're picking up subtle hints, like the way she acts with men, the way she acts in the club. She's she's trying to fulfill an unhappiness she has inside that, you know, I don't know that that comes across loudly in this movie, but there's just subtle hints that she's she's trying to satisfy something that's not being fulfilled, that she's she's got a sadness. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that comes out more and more the more she's taken over by this demon. Like, it's kind of a crude analogy, but like, I feel like we all knew that girl in like middle school that thought if she was the first one to like give a hand job or a blow job, like yeah. she'd be popular. And everyone's exactly. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? We're in middle school. Yeah. Like when they find out, they're like, they just think you're like a slut basically. Yeah. And then like that becomes her reputation. Exactly. That was Jennifer for sure. Yeah. Like, Cause they said like what? She hasn't been a virgin since uh, junior high. Don't yeah, they even say that? Yeah. Cause he, you know, he's talking about like, Oh, there's one of these girls in every town. Yeah. People you will know? like me if I'm easy is kind yeah. of her thought. And then they don't. And then she's like, well, they already think I'm a slut. Yeah, so I guess and that's I th- just exactly. how I'm branded now. And I think that's the picture that they're painting with this. I think she's not happy, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why she's got so many issues with her best friend it's because her best friend has love she has self-respect she has these things and she's jealous of that she's like i'm i'm so much more beautiful than my best friend but yet she's so much happier than me exactly exactly yeah deep guys interesting i know yeah but see there you go i mean look look what happens when sean's not here there's something to this movie (laughs) it becomes a scholarly podcast all of a sudden we we hope you're still with us on the scholarly. I mean, but sometimes it's cool to go and f- explore these things. And I think there's evidence for all these things we're saying. Like either any take yeah. of it, I think. There's I mean, that's a psychological, for all that. you know, yeah. profile of these characters. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, they have to know this when they write it. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I, you know, when I was saying female uh, uh, power fantasy, like it seems to me like a lot of female power fantasies end up with um, someone who gains power. Uh, and basically becomes a monster and is able to exact revenge on like the people who, you know, somehow gives them uh, upper hand so they can, uh, you know, deal out revenge to people that have wronged them. But I don't know if I got that necessarily. I mean, because I'm thinking like the witch or hereditary or not hereditary midsummer, you know, it's like they have these kind of uplifting endings where you're sitting there going like, you know, should I be happy about like you basically become this horrible, awful person, you know, where Jennifer has too. this time I watched the movie. I'm like, but it it may not be like Jennifer may not be the person that we're supposed to say is the empowering character. It's more about needy actually finding her finding her finding her voice and standing up for herself. It's needy's movie, I guess, you know, and that's the kind of thing that I was like, Okay, wait, wait, this is a different thing. Needy is the voice of the film yes. who's becoming like independent that she doesn't have to stay under the yoke of Jennifer yeah. and can actually find and be herself. Yeah. Of course, that means she has to, you know, drive a knife through the heart of her best friend and commit murder and become like, <laughs> you know, sure. but in her case, it feels more like. Uh, the 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 what she does at the end of the movie is more like justice for something that has been done, uh, you know, to her friend. Like they basically killed her friend. That's banned. You know, they killed her. Demon took her over. Yeah. And so needy is able to like even the score mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Did I go like off track? No. No. Okay. Not at all. All right then. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So I mean, we have uh, scenes that uh, I think all teen horror movies need to have Mm -hmm. uh which is it builds toward the climactic high school dance Mm -hmm. absolutely (laughs) naturally um 
I don't know if this one like paid off the way that I kind of wanted it to. No, I, I mean, wanted to massacre the yeah, dance. Yeah, it's like I think we're all I think we were all assuming it was going to be a carrious situation. Mm-hmm. You know? Or at least like get a little closer to that than it did cuz they didn't yeah. even make it into like Jennifer never even made it into the gym. Right, only Needy made it there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but low shoulders showed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh what do you think of uh in the trees or behind the trees or was it in the it's trees? It's going to be stuck in my head for like <laughs> a week now. Behind the trees I think is what it was. See, I think it was a totally forgettable song. Yeah? Yeah. You know, can't remember it right now? No. <laughs> um, this is another thing I think I was telling you during the movie yeah. that I like when movies, especially this one, which is so, it hinges on this song. Oh, yeah. Because the song is what they were playing at the bar that night, mm-hmm. and then it becomes like- like The uh, anthem of the, of the school. Which is yeah. a joke, right, that, that Co- Diablo Cody's making. It's that this fucking song by this band who basically- Cause the fire that killed everybody uh, becomes, you know, like everybody adopts it as like, this is our, you know, it brings st- brings back the emotion of all these people that we've lost. Right. And so it gets played over and over and over again. And finally, the band shows up at the at the school, you know, for a fundraiser or whatever. They're doing it for free. They're doing a fundraiser with the song. Mm-hmm. But somewhere and I should we should have looked this up. Maybe you did. Uh, who wrote this fucking song? Because it actually sounds like a real song of that time. You know, you know? I, I didn't. I looked actually, it up at the yeah. when then credits were going. Is a band called Wildling? They s- hmm. wrote and performed it, and they've actually done that for a couple other movies, like under band names for the like movies. Nice. So, okay. I didn't re- like. I didn't recognize that particular band. So, yeah. But yeah, their band. But it sounds like an s- actual song. I mean, yeah. you know. I, it does sound like an actual whenever, song. That's true. Whenever anybody could pull that off. I'm right. Like, and I like the fact that at the beginning, oh, but we watched the, there's two versions of this movie. Mm-hmm. A director's, or it's not a unrated. director's cut. It's unrated. Yeah. There's a theatrical yeah. and the unrated yeah. version. So I don't know if Kusama signed off on this or if this is just like the studio said, hey, we got more shit. Um, but it's like five minutes long or something like that. That's mm-hmm. the version that we watched. Um, I always wondered about this too. A little sidebar. When you get a, so you get a movie, right? Mm -hmm. And you didn't see it in the theater. Mm -hmm. And the option is you can either watch the theatrical cut or the director's cut. Which one do you go with? Director's cut. Depends on the movie. It's like I don't watch the director's cut of Rob Zombie movies. I watch the theatrical ones always. Yeah. Or like. It really depends on the director. Yeah. Or like, uh, like the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm not going to watch the. Oh, see, I watch the extended editions of those. I'm I'm probably gonna watch the theatrical mm. most likely. Okay, I was just kind of curious because I I like I always go for the director's cut because you yeah. always figure the feeling is at least that I had. You gotta tell me if this is you too. That the feeling is that when like this is the version that existed when they made it and then they chopped it down to the theatrical cut. Mm-hmm. So why shouldn't I watch the original intention? Yeah. Although it seems like more and more. When I watch those, I'm like, the fucking theatrical cut was actually the better version of the movie. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if I've, I mean, I'm pro, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out the director's cut to see which is better, see the differences. But it depends on the cut. If I watch it and I'm like, oh, this is too long, then obviously I'm gonna stick with the theatrical. It yeah. Just depends. I mean, there's some extended, very extended cuts that like make a whole different. The the abyss being one of them is one of those movies that like it always should have been the longer one, mm-hmm. and they cut it down. It's a long movie as it is. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's a whole lot of context given by the sure. longer. Yeah, you know, where I don't necessarily need the alternate version of The Exorcist, you know, or Apocalypse no. Now yeah. or something. You know, it's like okay. Yeah. Um, so our version of it, uh, I, I don't know the movie well enough to know what was different. I just remember that, you know, the, mm-hmm. there were certain scenes that were, uh, uh different in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that. I totally <laughs> lost the thread. Director's See, cuts. What yep. do you watch? Mm. <laughs> the well, difference between there. this one, unrated, yep, rated but cuts. We were talking about somewhere before that that led us into that. Now I can't remember oh. what it was. Rescue me with... Some little factoid about the movie. <laughs> I mean, we were just we were t- talking about how this is like a female empowerment kind of movie, or it has become that over time. And at the time, like, and maybe still, I'm not sure, but it didn't it didn't register 
that way to a lot of people. This movie did not do well in the box office at all. I blame the trailer. Yeah, the trailer sucked. Misleading and, trailer. And the, um, the marketing behind this movie, um, all male marketing, and... One of yeah, sh- because that kiss was in everything. One of oh, their- yeah, the hot lesbian kiss. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. One of their strategies for marketing this movie, they wanted to have Megan Fox do live chats on amateur porn sites. Well, let me read you the back mm-hmm. of Sounds the right. uh, yeah. Blu-ray that I'm holding here. It says, she's even hotter on Blu-ray. Sexy temptress Megan Fox is hotter than hell as Jennifer, a gorgeous, seductive cheerleader who takes evil to a whole new level after she's possessed by a exactly. sister demon. What, Steamy yeah. action. That makes oh it God. sound like and some like galore and Sue. exploitation movie. Exactly. Yeah. And like when the director heard that their plot of trying to market this on amateur porn sites, she's like, you missed the point of this entire fucking movie. Mm. She's like, if you do this, you will crush Megan Fox's spirit. Like, you don't understand what this movie is at all. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that this movie was made for girls, but it was marketed to guys because Megan Fox was uh, like an unearthly. Uh, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's she was Phoebe of Cates yeah. of the mid aughts. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's definitely. A if big this part movie had been it. made in the '80s, it would be Phoebe Cates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Maybe and somewhere in there, and there's another version of this where instead of barbed wire. It's Jennifer's body. Yeah, exactly. Pamela Anderson. Mm-hmm. Or something that just came around <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the right time. I <clears throat> I took note of I found a review um what Roger Ebert said about this movie and I thought that we, I thought it was interesting. He said it's Twilight for boys. And as, as a movie about flesh eating cheerleader, it's better than it has to be. <laughs> and <laughs> and it he has said, to be. Yeah, and he said about Diablo Cody that she has the soul of an artist and her screenplay brings to this material a certain edge, a kind of gleeful relish that's uncompromising. This isn't your assembly line teen horror thriller. I was like, you know what? I think I'm on, I'm I on mean, with Ebert at this There was point. a lot of pressure put on this movie being the follow up to Juno. You there know? really was. Like, and Megan Fox's first movie following the Transformers. If, yeah, exactly. If I'm right. Um, I thought it was funny that he called it Twilight for boys because there's so much of this movie that reminded me. It is straight up Twilight. (laughs) So, but it doesn't feel like Twilight for boys. I mean, other than like you know, guys will go because you get to you know, Megan Fox is in the movie. Mm -hmm. Although it doesn't necessarily have, I don't know, maybe it does have some of the scenes that I expect. There was no shower scene, for instance, Mm -hmm. but she did get naked in a. Well, I mean, you know, the movie doesn't show it. Mm-hmm. I remember that was actually like a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, shots from this movie were released somewhere on like Ain't It Cool News or whatever. And uh, she had, um, what do you call the, uh, like tape over pasties. her. The pasties yeah. over her nipples when she was doing uh, her nude scenes. But it does have nude scenes in the movie, mm-hmm. I suppose. You know, which. Simulated nudity. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Well, you just, anything, you don't you see yeah. it from the back yeah. and all this. Um, but I think probably to a lot of guys that's, you know, that is, you know, mm-hmm. it's there. Um, and it does have this, uh, moment between needy and, um, Jennifer, uh, where they like start making out and it's not like just a kiss. It's like, no, it goes on for a long time. It's a long scene. Tongue and exploratory. Don't know what the point of kiss. that scene was. No, they were supposed to have sex originally. Yeah. They changed that. Yeah. What yeah. does that? What does any of it exactly. say of the movie? Exactly. Well, this is the question. Seems like What's, a script actoring from someone that saying, is not Diablo Cody. Is uh, what it sounds like. The <laughs> demon Jennifer is so crazy appealing that even needy can't uh, uh, turn it down. Or does it say that you know their relationship is being so close was closer to some kind of? Is it saying that subconsciously there was some kind of attraction between them? Or I mean, but the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't, ultimately, whatever it, that it doesn't matter because it doesn't mean anything to the story. It doesn't change anything that happens. Yeah. Does it change their dynamic? Is no, that the because moment it doesn't that, pay off to anything. No. I'm trying to think. Is she? Uh, in that same scene where kind of uh, needy is like, whoa, what the fuck is happening here? And then immediately changes the subject. The subject yeah. becomes that Jennifer has just killed uh, this guy, Cullen, that um, needy is friends with or has an interest right. in, even though she's dating the other guy. Uh, so then it becomes, I mean, that is kind of the, the scene where, you know, their dynamic really splits. And it's like from that point on, they're adversarial. Yeah, yeah, but it it, it does. 
It has, it not, just, it has nothing it to do matter. with... It doesn't matter. It doesn't... Yeah, it, the act has nothing to do with any, the rest of it. If it was some sort of thing where, like, Needy's always been in love with her or something, it doesn't matter because it never comes back. That's never a part of no. the story. It's never... You know, it would it would have been interesting if they had done something like that, but they didn't. It, it's, yeah. it was clearly trailer bait, you know? Because that scene was in the trailer a bunch. Mm-hmm. Because it puts boys' butts in the seats, you know? I went so. to see this movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It worked, you know? I did feel kind of bad that, uh, what's his name? Boyfriend. Didn't make it. I Chip, liked him. Chip? Yeah, Chip. 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 Yeah. His name's Chip, for Christ's sakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't make it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like the fact that he stabs the demon Jennifer when she's floating around, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. in the uh, the climax in the swimming that pool. That dirty ass pool. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Not at the uh, at the dance, unfortunately. Is that a budgetary thing or something? That like, was an why? expensive looking set. You got yeah. All that, yeah. All the dirt in the pool and mm-hmm. stuff, but like it's more horror ish. Yeah. Like, uh, were they too afraid of the carry comparison? That's what I'm Probably. wondering. Yeah. Then why even have a dance in your story at all? It's a then you know, high school movie. And you make, gotta it the, have make it the homecoming football game. Yeah, you know, there you go. there's a lot of things that happen in a high school that are not dances. Yeah, yeah. Make it, it just, another it just, concert. <laughs> that that whole like the dance and you know him wandering through the park and that's where she. The whole thing felt like I don't really know what to write here. What even was that building that the pool was in? I think it, it was. It looked like a Greek. It know, looked. Like it looked like, yeah, like a frat house, house like something. a like a dilapidated <laughs> frat house or something. Mm. Like I assumed it was like a, like a. Oh, you know what? It might have been like a country club, like a like an abandoned country so club. Weird. Because why else would there be a giant swimming pool? Yeah, I think it might have been like an old country club. Yeah, mm, I thought it was part of the school, but maybe not. No. Well, I mean, there is a, a final showdown, which doesn't take even place there, right? This is this is a big problem with this movie. The Which? the the um unwillingness to end. Oh my god, just <laughs> yeah. end. Like well, don't have... do two endings, you know? <laughs> There's a fight scene basically of the confrontation between Needy and Jennifer over Chip. Chip mm-hmm. dies in this after trying to, you know, uh well no, because basically she seduces him mm-hmm. and she's telling him all these things about Needy and whatever. And seduces him, but then she puts a vampire bite on him, mm-hmm. and he is able to eventually, like you know, spear her. But she's immortal at this point; basically, can only be killed by being stabbed through the heart. Yeah, which, but that doesn't make any sense with the logic of the movie, though, because they, she said that she only has like the ability to heal when she's full, right? Yeah, and she's obviously needing to eat because that's why she's there with him, Chip, at that moment because she mm-hmm. needs to eat. So, like the the mythology of this movie she is fast and loose. Enough of his blood, she, yeah, apparently. She, yeah. she had a little bit. She had a little snack. <laughs> yeah. But the climax doesn't take place there. It takes black place back in Jennifer's bedroom. Is there some kind of subliminal thing going on there? I don't know. Is this like a test screening ending or something? Did they originally have the ending actually in like where the pool is and that didn't work so they attacked this ending know. on? It's, it's weird because that feels like the ending. It's right. Yeah. It doesn't so make any weird. sense. It's like you have Chip's death then she kills Jennifer in the pool. Yeah, and yeah. then it's done. But no, they. she goes back to the house, mm-hmm. goes yeah. to sleep, Jennifer does. Needy sneaks in, and then uh, uh, madness and, and Susan. They, which, they wrestle a bit, they flow, and then she stabs her. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it turns out after that, uh, Needy is arrested and taken to uh, mental ward, but mm-hmm. she has taken on some of the demon's uh, right. powers. Because when they were fighting, Jennifer bit her. And yeah. she absorbed some of the power. Very convenient of them to introduce this at the end of the movie. Right? The very end of the movie, you know? Like, she was doing the fucking demon research. Why couldn't she have just read she that? She didn't at- mention it earlier when yeah. she did her demon research. Yeah, just, just mention something then. Yeah. yeah. She that's what, that's what I'm saying. She says that it's not in the demon research. But then, she, but how does she know been. it then? Well, because she's experiencing it. She's got the power, and like, how else do oh I have God, it? It's because I was bit. To me, that just screams, yeah, like, test screening ending. Yeah, it's, like, it's sloppy. It's, it, feels tacked on yeah well she gets uh however i don't hate it no it's not the, it's not the worst <laughs> it's not the worst and it's not the most obvious tacked on yeah. ending that we've seen you know but it's not like the whole like she absorbed the power and then she's gonna use the power to get her revenge no. on the band i was like yeah i, I kind of don't hate that and they play that out pretty well well she's picked yeah. up to go see the band by uh the legend lance henriksen mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> stops by to pick her up in a scene which is similar to the ending of the Evil Dead remake, sure. maybe in the, the extended cut. And that's why I was like, was Lance Henriksen in that too? Mm-hmm. I don't think he was. I think he was just in this. 
Um, but yeah, then the credit sequence is these kind of like, uh, uh, I mean, I like the way that that was done. I do too. All these yeah. still photo, like crime scene photos mm-hmm. of like the band got killed in their hotel room. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And the implication is, well, I guess explicitly at the end, she's seen on a video, on a surveillance camera, Needy killed them all. So yeah. Needy does, you know, get revenge for, mm-hmm. you know, everything that happened, which mm-hmm. was their fault. This demonic, right. wannabe, satanic band. Low shoulder. Right, which, you know, to Michaela's point earlier, how she was saying, like, she's, you didn't know if, um, if it really mattered you know, it, uh, about the sacrifice that they, right. like, the, they might have gotten famous anyway or didn't get famous. I'm wondering if this is, like, the the demon was, like, pissed. It's a monkey's well, yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, like I, oh, you weren't supposed, like, you did it wrong, so you weren't supposed to get it. So now she's getting her revenge that way. Yeah, that's you know? how I see it. That's kind that of how. That is the kind yeah. of, like, you got it, but, you know, because you, weren't you fucking didn't do supposed it right. To. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind then, of It's a monkey's paw it. situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got your for fame. Sure. Now that fist is curling up, yep. motherfucker. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's how all of these things end, yeah. dear Braille. wannabe Satanist dear friends who are listening right now. <laughs> don't even do it because it's going to end up biting you in the butt. Or give it a shot. Live your life. Whatever. Right. <laughs> you uh, do you. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Jennifer's body. We're going to go around the room tell you whether or not you should watch it. Uh, but before then, we're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we need to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got a little emo kid costume on. Mm-hmm. Be period appropriate. I thought he was just like a cheerleader. Oh, well, he's Come got on. that on the bottom half. <laughs> he's got the skirt on. <laughs> they had to be like a popular costume the year that it came out. No, they probably wanted No, it to because be no one liked this movie like, when it came out. Cheerle- it was poorly received. Cheerleader's just always been a costume. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but in the blue and whatever, the Jennifer's body. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we should let people know we want to hear from you. Uh, you know, join the Freak Show family. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Set Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Appy L writes in and says, uh, okay, I'm listening to your top films of 2018 and I'm watching Mandy. Well, well, you're talking to two, to one right Christ yeah. person. <laughs> That's right. I still have not seen it. I can't wait to hear what you think about that, <laughs> about Mandy. Uh, about tonight's movie, Jennifer's Body, MF Mad. Who is the keeper of the wall? Thank you, of sir. Fame. Thank you for your uh, efforts, sir. For your never ending service. Wow. Because it is a lot. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, he, uh, this is the wall of fame. If you appear on three mm-hmm. films that we talk about on this show, you go up, you get your picture on the wall. Or if you've directed. Yeah. Directors I mean, also some, make their way. Yeah. Well, uh, Megan Charpentier. Hmm. Charpentier. She was little needy mm-hmm. in Jennifer's body. Yeah. But then she was also in It and It Chapter 2 as Greta. Greta is the girl who pours all the shit on Beverly in the bathroom. Oh. So oh, the bully? To be the, the bully. The bully. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So there you go. Gotcha. 2009 to 2017. So I mean, had, good for that girl still working. You yeah. Know? Still working. Uh, Simon Carter writes in to say, uh, I know I've seen the movie, but I don't remember a goddamn thing about it. <laughs> that probably sums the mo- up the movie, but I'm happy to be wrong. So uh, not last week's episode, but I think the week before that, uh, Simon uh, wrote in after mm-hmm. he was a little uh, intoxicated. Mm-hmm. He did. And so I did a, uh, a thing. <laughs> and... <laughs> Simon writes in to say, this is how those drunk comments happen. I play in a classic rock cover band as a hobby. We play on Fridays and Saturdays, so it's common that I see the freak show posts on social media at this time. Anyhow, Colin's reenactment made me laugh my ass off, and I've always wanted to apologize in advance because I know it won't be the last one. Thanks for doing the show, guys. I've become a huge fan since finding it about six months ago. You guys rock. Uh, I mean... We're rarely sober doing this, so we have no room to talk or judge. I'm I'm, half in the bag. I'm usually sober, but (laughs) Uh, also I'd like to hear his his classic rock cover band. I know. I asked him if he could send us uh, his music. 
Uh, Jacob Cotner writes in and says, oh, man, I love this movie. It's very stylish and original. Never understood the hate for it. Mm-hmm. I think it looks great that the lead two girls have a believable friendship. Gore is on point, especially the unrated cut. I also dig the music. Diablo Cody's writing is a standout here, too, though it's some kind of or though some of it is kind of cringy. But this movie proves that Megan Fox can act recommended. Keep freaking you freaks. Happy Halloween. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will say. So. Yeah, I will say I, I agree with him about their friendship. There's something very real about being friends with somebody from a very young age. And then once you get to high school, you've both changed so much that there's almost like a love hate thing happening. So it actually makes sense to me. Like, I I get it. I think that, I mean, before we uh, before we watched this tonight, I hadn't seen it since it came out, but I've never really been a fan of Megan Fox. Yeah. But I'm starting to think maybe it's just she I don't like the thing she's in that. I, I think that's more what I it totally is. Agree. Don't like the Transformers movies. Don't like Jonah Hex. Yeah. I don't think I've seen her in anything else other than those. And I, so I'm starting to think, cause I thought she did some cool things with her face that were really creepy in this movie. And yeah. she, she knew some weird body things that were very creepy, you know, mm-hmm. and, and she plays insecure in this movie, which I kind of, yeah. Like. yeah. Yeah. Like at least in the pre demon right. Jennifer right. does insecure in a way that I'm like, yeah, right. It's, uh, yeah. So this yeah. is starting to make me rethink how I think about her. I yeah. think it's just the movie she's in or not I think giving so her anything. I think so too. Well, Grant Parrish writes in and says, I got this for Christmas one year in a two pack Blu ray with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie. I have that. Uh, he said, <laughs> I watched it. I don't hate it, but I'm really struggling to say anything about the movie. It's different than Juno, I guess. And it was <laughs> better than I thought it would be. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, Maya Madsen writes in and says, are you watching the rated or the unrated version? There's a five minute runtime difference. Unrated. Yes, you're correct. Uh, About last week's episode was last week. The fun house. Mm, Two weeks ago. Last week. No, last week we watched. What did we watch last week? Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, fuck. oh, oh Halloween 2 TV. That's right. Yeah, yeah it was two weeks ago. Fucking damn it. There's no How mail. How could we forget? No mail I about Halloween 2. Yeah, because what is there to say about it? Yeah. yeah. Well, God. we'll find out probably damn next week. It. About the fun house, Punk Boss Sloan 69 I'm sorry, says, but can we just talk about how Sean dropped that fucking bomb and then didn't show up this week because he knows? Because he fucking knows? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Continue. I hope he listens to this episode. Yeah. Uh, Punk Boss Sloan 69 says, the fun house is highly underrated. Michael Whitaker says if they made this movie in New Jersey, it would be set on the boardwalk. Same <laughs> level of rides and safety. <laughs> uh, the Good Morning Nancy podcast. It's morning, like I'm morning. Your oh, cool. Uh, cool. Good Morning like Nancy. Nice. You're nice. I like Good that. Morning Nancy podcast says I caught this film on TV as a kid. It fucked me up. Ha ha. For years I was looking for it. <laughs> and about five or six years ago, I finally figured out what it was. Yeah, if I saw that as a kid, that'd fuck me up. Mm-hmm. That mutant face. Yeah, yeah that sure. Gunther. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jacob Laws says, oh, the Gunther was designed by Rick Baker, right? right. The mm-hmm. uh, makeup effects guy. Jacob Laws says, this looks worse than the King Kong suit he created. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I take offense at that, sir. That fucking King Kong suit. I believe that gorilla. God damn it. Uh, Carson Snar Put that on says, a t-shirt, Colin. I believe that gorilla. God damn it. <laughs> That was one of the greatest like gorilla suits I've ever in movie <laughs> history. Okay. Uh Carson Snar says uh Gunther's a handsome fella. And Sean Roger uh said he's interested to hear what y'all thought of this flick, as I found nothing of interest in it whatsoever. Mm. Well, you'll, you'll have uh, to listen to our episode. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to listen. You'll yeah. have heard it by now, probably. Yep. <laughs> uh so now we're gonna go around the room and tell you what we thought of Jennifer's body. Colin. Yes. What do you think of Jennifer's body? I always have to go first. I'm always sitting over here. Right. Um, right. I'm okay. sitting in the first seat. I have always liked Jennifer's Body. I saw this movie when it was first released and uh, really liked it, you know, as a, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, just, it is a horror, I, I guess I first saw it as a horror film with a sharp sense of humor. Um now like i said you know watching it now it's like well it's more a comedy than it is a horror movie um but i like the dynamic and i like you know it's kind of this uh, it's a female centric uh version of um you know i mean because basically what we're talking about right is the relationship between the two girls and how that gets fractured by uh high school it's not so much hormones 
high school, uh, just... Um, Not a lot of it is hormones. Yeah? Yeah. You think? Yeah. Okay, so am I on there? It feels more pronounced in ginger snaps, which... You're feeling a lot when you're a teenage girl. A lot. And that's <laughs> creating this kind of, even though you're best friends, you have this kind of, you, you want to be with the person and like you yeah, resent them at the same time because yeah. there's a competitiveness, I'm I'm assuming, that this is what we're talking about, that yeah. comes in. And this is what that movie, the subtext of the film is, where the, you know, actual thing is, it's trying to be a fun, goopy uh, horror flick. I like the scenes. I like the uh, the people who are in it and the surprise cameos. Is like clearly they have their head in the right place for when. I mean, when Lance Henderson showed up at the end of the movie, yeah. I was like, okay, that's surprise. the you know rubber stamp right yeah. there. Um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it then. I still enjoy it now. I really don't understand what they're you know because I wasn't aware that like there was this huge outpouring of hatred for the movie and i'm like you know now i'm looking into it i'm like well, what the fuck you know like people really didn't like this movie i mean i'm accustomed to that all my life that you watch a movie you like it and everybody else hates it um yeah i don't know what uh you know if it's just like people resent megan fox she's too beautiful you have that a lot of times like somebody get they're too hot and everybody just kind of uh, you know, turns on that. You know, it's like she was she not hasn't earned, hasn't earned yeah. where she got or whatever. She had a habit of putting her foot in her mouth in public a lot, and that I think turned a lot of people against her. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, but I mean, what does that have to do with the movie I mean, or just well, the cult of personality? Was, Becomes bigger than the character. When or she she, than she was actor. under a microscope for a couple of years, and she always put her foot in her mouth when she did, and, and it hurt became, her career. Yeah, 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 exactly. She's not doing anything now. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least not anything notable that we've heard of. And uh, I think uh, Diablo Cody is the same way. It's like, I don't understand the ire that's always directed at her. It's like, she's a screenwriter. Okay. She has and, a distinct voice. You hate her for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So I, I guess I don't get why people don't, you know, attack the movie for those reasons. Um, I mean, I do get that. It's like, okay, it's very, it's a very snarky movie. And it doesn't take itself seriously. So if you were looking for a serious horror movie, then maybe you're like, you know, uh, well, it's not a spoof, but it's, you know, because it's not taking itself seriously, then it's like, well, you know, I I enjoyed it. I think I would recommend it. It's a fun movie. It's, uh, you know, perfect for Halloween. You should check it out. Jennifer's Body. Michaela, what would you think? Um, I think that the the backlash to this movie has a lot to do with expectations. Uh, like I was saying, I, when I first saw it, when it first came out, I was disappointed by it. But that's because this was one of those MTV movies where like every commercial break in MTV, you saw a trailer they or like a first look or something with this. Mm-hmm. And it was all about like this. It's going to be this sexy horror movie. It's going to be this like, like, like it's going to be something your parents like wouldn't want you to watch you know like it was almost promoted to like a like a basic instinct fear type level movie yeah and so like when that's the expectation you're given and you get like this kind of campy like um really like distinct diablo cody type voiced movie um i can see why you wouldn't like it i think that those people need to revisit it with their expectations kind of tempered a little bit um but as a former teenage girl myself i can say that being a teenage girl is like being possessed um your your emotions are going insane your brain is like soaking in a juice of uh just like everything is going insane all at the same time and there's nothing you can do to help it but wait for your brain to harden up a little bit <laughs> like yeah. um and so i think that that's a really interesting idea the idea of like that teenage girls turn evil because they're fucking possessed i really like that <laughs> um like i said this has me rethinking how i feel about megan fox in general because i thought that she was actually really good in this and like did some really creepy things with her body and her face and mm-hmm. things i didn't think she was capable of before we rewatched this tonight yeah. um and i i kind of like I think her like comments that she made about Michael Bay were very valid. And I think it's unfortunate because at the time she made them, people weren't ready to hear that. Yeah. Um, It's unfortunate that like she tried to like kind of push a me too type movement before people wanted it and kind of got shat on for it. Whereas if she had said those things a couple years later, she would be considered like a hero, you know? Yeah. So I think that maybe as a society, we need to like ease up on her a little bit and just kind of let her live her life. And maybe not be so harsh towards Megan Fox. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean I love Diablo Cody movies for the most part. I I would really love to see her 
return to horror. I would love to see her and Fetty Alvarez do a movie together. Her write it and he direct and like oh, yeah. or maybe co-write together. I love that. Get back together with Reitman, like especially mm-hmm. and quit doing fucking pregnancy movies or like arrested <laughs> development adult movies. Like I I I still go see them and I'm always like why am I going to see this? I've already seen her do this twice. <laughs> um but I still love her and I still want to see her do more. And I I think you should definitely check it out. I think it's worth a watch. I think it's all about expectations, but definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Holly? Yeah, I, I think um I I think that this movie was absolutely marketed wrong and I think that's why it went in the direction that it did. People um they didn't know their audience this movie. They they saw the surface of the movie. They saw two girls kissing, they saw the cheerleader, they saw like the shallow shit that they thought they should market to a certain crowd. And it just that's not what this movie is. Um I don't think it deserves the hate that it gets. I, I think it's uh, I think it's a substantial movie. I think, you know, it has its cheesy moments, but I really enjoy Diablo Cody. I think she's a good writer. I, I think she's an enjoyable writer. Um, she's not she doesn't necessarily write relatable all the time, but sometimes she really gets it right. Um, and I think she creates these universes that you are okay existing and that you're okay with watching these characters and it works for, for what she does. Um, I will say we almost had a movie, um, that Jennifer was played by Blake Lively and needy was Emma stone. We, I could totally see that movie. I could totally see that. And I kind of want to, yeah, Blake Lively had a conflict with with gossip girl. So she couldn't do it. (sighs) Yeah. Like there was just little things. We almost had that movie, but like having seen a simple favor, I was like having seen a simple favor. That would have been so rad. I would have loved that. (laughs) That would have been so awesome. So cool. I, Oh God, I I, I want that version. I think that would have been great. Um, but I totally agree with you. I was never a big fan of Megan Fox, but I think she really shines in this movie. I think she did a really great job. Um, she has said before that this is her favorite thing that she's ever done. And I think it's, you know, partly because it's a really interesting movie and it's not a fucking Michael Bay movie. Um, and also because, range. and also because she has a voice in this movie, she has depth in this movie mm-hmm. and I think she's really proud she's of it. Not just she a prop. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, I, and, and that's the, that's the funny part is that she does play like the pretty cheerleader, mm-hmm. but she has so much depth and so much character. Like it's, it's, it's really a great performance. I think she does an amazing job. Um, I think Amanda Seyfried did a great job in this as well. I think she, I, I like her. I think she's a great actress. Um, but yeah, I think this is, this is a great movie. You know, it does have, we, we didn't talk a lot about the horror elements, but it does have horror elements. It's, it's pretty bloody. Um, and Megan Fox really does some creepy shit with her face. And like you said, with her body language and, um, there was a couple moments I was like, shit, I forgot that that was as creepy as it is. That part you know? when she was crouched up on that chair when really made me uncomfortable. Yeah. That and like that slow smile in the kitchen when mm-hmm. she first sees her, that's freaky as shit, dude. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, th- I think this is, I think it's a good movie. I think it's a fun Halloween movie. Um, I definitely think you should check out Jennifer's body. It's a good time. All right. Well, that's a freak show recommends. That's right. Right. That's unanimous. That's Jennifer's right. body. You should check it out. <clears throat> Uh, so next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? Well, I had a plan, but I'm going to throw that plan out the window. Oh no. Oh no. Um, so 2019's, uh, already been a pretty disappointing year for horror, right? Yeah. So we can't get any worse at this point, right? So right. we're going to take a field trip to see Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna see the movie about the it's app mandatory. that tells you when you're gonna die okay it's yeah. internet horror it's gonna date it's gonna age horribly it's gonna be hilarious <sighs> it comes out next week well it's just week. the mandatory field trips are like then we got oh whatever okay oh like you're not gonna go to the movies anyway you're gonna I see it gonna go way. see that one <laughs> Fucking Callan, hell. you went and saw La Llorona and all the other horror movies that came yeah. out this I year. I don't want to hear it. You would totally go see Countdown. <laughs> all right. Next week. Hey, maybe we'll like lose our minds and it'll be like an hour of our insanity in real time. Be. Just so I can see what the hopeful alternate future would have been. <laughs> what well, were you going to I got to save it. I might yeah. pick it Son in the next Save bitch. it. Save it. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right, so Happy Countdown, Halloween, everyone. some movie that if you're listening to this in the future, you're like, what is this? Countdown. Next week, it's a killer app, right? It's The Ring, but it's uh, it, it's I think it's more like Final Destination, but an app. We'll okay. find out. It's The we'll Ring meets Final Destination meets an app. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> and until then, the basement is going dark.